President Biden met privately at the White House with families of Americans being held hostage by Hamas. U.S. officials say eight Americans are still unaccounted for. Four people were released last month during a week-long ceasefire. Ed O'Keefe has more from the White House. The two-hour meeting was the president's first face-to-face -face encounter with families of Americans being held hostage in Gaza. We could have no better friend uh, in Washington or in the White House than President Biden himself and his administration. But little is known about the state of those still being held. Was the president able to share anything about their condition? We are going to keep the, the content of the conversation private. The White House says there are eight Americans still unaccounted for, including Americans still being held hostage. It is believed 135 total hostages of varying nationalities remain in Gaza. The meeting came a day after the president, for the first time publicly since the Hamas attacks, questioned Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, saying he has to change as Israel's coalition government is making it difficult to establish a Palestinian state. Mr. Biden also said Israel is losing global support for its indiscriminate bombing of Gaza. Attacks deemed indiscriminate are usually considered violations of international law. But did he misspeak yesterday when he said that uh, Israel was carrying out indiscriminate attacks. The president speaks and has spoken, Ed, about our concerns over civilian casualties in Gaza and about urging our Israeli counterparts to be more careful and more deliberate. Today in Israel, Netanyahu defiantly said we are continuing until the end, adding, in the face of international pressures, nothing will stop us. In Gaza, heavy fighting continued, leading to the deaths of 10 Israeli soldiers, their highest single-day losses so far. And Ed O'Keefe joins us now. Ed, we heard a bit in your piece about how Biden is now criticizing Israel's Netanyahu. Um, how is the White House strategy changing other than those one set of remarks? Well, publicly they're saying the president wasn't calling for a new government, wasn't saying that Israel has committed war crimes, but merely now is more publicly expressing concerns that the administration has had writ large over the last several weeks about Israel's continued bombardment of Gaza. How is it changing the policy? We'll see in the coming days as the National Security Advisor uh, and the Secretary of uh, State and Defense are also scheduled to be in the region to discuss this with Israeli counterparts uh, and try to get those hostages released and also see if there's any way to at least tweak mm. Israel's military strategy. And uh, speaking about the hostages, what do we know about what the White House is doing to try to uh, release more of those hostages or press for the release anyway? So the fact that he took this meeting is a sign of how seriously the White House still takes this matter mm -hmm. and a signal to Israel and Hamas, of course, that he wants them released and all the other hostages for that matter. And maybe there's a chance for another pause to get them out. Also important to note, John, it is incredibly rare for a president to have any kind of encounter with the families of an American that's deemed wrongfully detained in another country. They usually don't want to have the president do that because it could lead to more risk for the person being held, could, you know, up the ransom from that captive, the country holding someone captive. In this case, the calculation is so much of the world is paying attention to it. So many other countries have had people wrongfully detained, held hostage, mm -hmm. that by putting pressure on the situation, perhaps they can all get released. Ed O'Keefe at the White House for us. Thank you, Ed.